Let's take a moment to see how much we have learned from Newton's first, second and third laws. All right, we have three cases. In each case, I want to know what's the acceleration of the block and what direction it's moving. I want you to try and figure out it first and then let me do it. Okay, so pause, try to figure out, share the solution. Look, let's go to question one. We have one force acting towards the left, another force acting towards the right. I will tell you the best way to solve such problems. Now I know this is very easy to do, but the way I like to do it always is by choosing one direction positive. And then use the fact that net force equals mass times acceleration. Now, since my right side is positive, I have a net force of five newtons towards the right. I have a force of five newtons towards the right. And I have a force of 10 newtons towards the left, so that's minus 10. These two together form the net force. You see, net force means you have to write all the forces that are acting on one body. I'm done on the left side, and now I have to substitute the mass times the acceleration. Acceleration is five minus 10, that's minus five divided by five, that's y minus one meters per second squared. So that makes a lot of sense because this force is bigger, so the acceleration, we would expect it to be in this direction. So it's one meters per second square this way. What direction is it moving? Well, remember, Newton's second law does not say anything about motion. You have to go to Newton's first law. Newton's second law always says about acceleration. You have to go to first law. First law tells you that this object would move in a direction uh, and that depends on its its original, I mean, the, the, it depends on its velocity before, before this instant. So if it was initially moving this way, it would continue to move and speed up in this direction. But if it was moving this way, well, then I don't know, it might still be moving this way and might keep speeding down, might slow down. It could also be at rest, it could also be moving this way. So in none of the cases you can tell in what direction it's moving, okay? Let's go to case number two. In case two, we have one force down, one force up. Again, I will do it in a systematic manner. Let's make all this as positive. So net force means there are two forces, 10 downwards, 10 upwards. That must be equal to mass times acceleration. And that gives you acceleration as zero, no surprise. Again, what direction it's moving, you can't tell. It can be moving in any direction it wants. And then comes the third one, could be a little bit challenging. All right, so in the third one, let me take right direction as positive, let me take downwards as positive. So if I use in the right, so let me just, Okay, so if I use Newton's second law in the x direction, I can just say net force in the x direction, like in the horizontal, must be equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. So it's only in the x. So net force in the x direction is 10, this way, 10, minus 2, that should be equal to mass times a x. That's 8 equal to 2 times AX, so AX equal to 8 by 2, that is 4. That's the acceleration along the X direction. But we also have acceleration in the Y direction, for that I'm going to use FY equals MAY, and there's only one force acting, that's downwards. So 6 is going to be 2 into AY, so AY is going to be 3 meters, 3 meters per second squared. So we now have the acceleration which has one component downwards of 3, one component towards the right at 4. So the net acceleration is going to, the actual acceleration, these are just the components, the acceleration is going to be this way. That is 5 Pythagoras theorem, meters per second squared. This angle, well it's 4 and 5, so it's 37 degrees. This will be 63, 53. So I hope you have some idea now behind Newton's laws and how to uh, how to work out some simple problems. Next time we're going to dive into some serious problems. Stay tuned.